How to become a success story in the retail industry? The best person to answer these questions is my guest today. We're here to help you to facilitate your business. Three important things you need to pay attention to if you're a newcomer to this space. Retail is probably one of the most difficult businesses to enter into. I meet entrepreneurs who think that they can conquer this market through online. Four of the major online companies in yeah. the UK are very close to bankruptcy. Is there still space for the smaller retailers? Hi guys, welcome to my episode Brands Through Stories. Organized in collaboration with Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers. The UAE has some of the most iconic malls in the world. Dubai is one of the top 10 shopping destinations. Saudi Arabia is having enormous growth in all kinds of industries, including retail. I meet a lot of entrepreneurs every month who want to enter this market or are in this region who want to expand and they have a lot of questions. And some of them is what it takes to become a strong player in retail industry in this region. What do they need to be prepared for in order to fight a highly competitive environment? And also how to become a success story in the retail industry. The best person to answer these questions is my guest today, David McAdam. Thank you so much, David, for joining me. David has more than 40 years experience in retail industry, regionally as well as globally. He is heading for 10 years, correct? Going 11 now. Going 11 now. Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers. It's the largest organization, right? Uh, largest network of shopping malls and retailers. 900 shopping malls. Now 1,100. Uh huh. And how many retailers, individual? Uh, around 1,200 individual retailers now. There is no one who can beat you. There, you are the man <laughs> with the largest network across how many countries? Well, the GCC for sure. And then it goes on beyond that now too, because with the time that I've spent in the region, it also includes the stands. So Azerbaijan and Kyrgyzstan, and then it gets into Pakistan, and then there's India, and then don't forget Iran and Iraq. So it yeah. goes on and on. So you are the man for us. Great. I know you've been in the ind Thank you so much, first of all, My for pleasure, joining Nina. me. My pleasure, Thank you for inviting me. It's true pleasure and an honor to be here. So thank you. I hope you'll enjoy the journey uh, <laughs> and do. my questions. Uh, carry on. <laughs> Um, I know you've been in this part of the world 18 years, is that correct? Or even more now? It's more. Um, I, I came here originally in April of 2004. So it's like 20. Ah, uh, 20. So it's 20 years. Yes. And um, I've enjoyed every minute. Really? Yes. Every minute? Well, you know, I have a lot of gray hair and white hair now, so maybe there's been some episodes, but otherwise, yes. Beautiful. And you work for top companies, I think, MR... Alpha Team, GLL, and so on. Yes. You know, all the old guard, yes. all the heroes of this region. Yes, yes. I've been blessed, actually, with the ability to deal with the, the best and the brightest minds in this region. Yeah. I'd like to a little bit of a crash course from you mm. on the evolution of retail. Sure. I think as a new retailer or a new businessman in this part of the world, in order to be successful, you need to know a little bit of a history and how the whole retail industry has evolved. So if you could give us really crash course on it. You're talking regionally or you're talking globally now? You know? Let's go regionally. Because okay. globally, I think, I would love globally also, but globally you can find a lot of information on Google. Sure. Right, our, our source of uh, search. Uh, but regional is quite difficult to find really from the original sources. Well, let me start with a story first. Mm -hmm. um, when I first took over the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers, uh, it was just called that, MECSC, yes. and now it is called the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers. 
but going back in the early days, so this is around 2013 when I first mm-hmm. got involved in the uh, MECSC. And one of the things that I did was I wanted to have a following that would pursue with interest what I was trying to do with the MECSC. That was to uh, knock down the silos that are in the industry because before everyone was treating their shopping center like it was the recipe for Coca-Cola. That means that they thought it was too special. Mm-hmm. But there are so many things that you can share in the industry, and that's what I, that's one of the things that I wanted to do. So getting back to the story, I wanted to reach out to all of the members who were inactive, all of the people who hadn't done anything in the region. Um, in terms of collaborating or sharing knowledge. So I asked everyone to send me some photographs of their shopping center Uh or their retail environment from wherever they were. And I got it from Mecca through to you name the places throughout the GCC. I have pictures that are dated from 1868 of the retail that was in Mecca at the time all the way through to today. And I wrote this book in 2014. That's when it was uh, published. Everyone, what I found was that everyone wanted to become part of the book so that they could see what everybody else was doing. Oh, that was so it was <laughs> they wanted to really understand their own business. And the best way to do that is to share just a little bit. But they shared some great photographs, and every picture tells a thousand words. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I had uh, it was 185 pages, a coffee table book of nothing but photographs, and then very brief statements in Arabic and English, both. And that's how I began. That's and how I began book, this. Mm-hmm. The book is called Souks to Malls. Souks to Malls, yes, Retail Souks Evolution to... in yes, the Gulf. Yes. That was the first book published in 2014. It was so successful, all 2,500 copies, free of charge, we, dis- we distributed right away. And in 2018, mm-hmm. I wanted to write another one because it was uh, those days in retail, it was all about uh, the entertainment component. Correct. So yeah. that book was titled Souks to Malls Retail Evolution in the Gulf Entertainment. Mm-hmm. And this year, which is our 30th anniversary of the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers, we're writing the third book. So it's the third of the, the trilogy. And this one's called Souks to Malls Retail Evolution in the Gulf, The People. And this is great, too, because many, many, many of my friends have been involved. I say friends, colleagues, they're people that I've met in the industry here who want to be involved, but also recognized in some small way for their contribution to the retail. Right, right. Oh, it was beautiful. I have to say, I was a little bit part of the journey. because I, I moved here 27 years ago, and my first shopping destination was uh, Souk in Sharjah called Blue Souk. At that and time. I have shopped in Blue Souk, and I still really? remember, yeah, we have friends in the Blue Souk. In fact, you can find some of the best carpets and some of the best uh, pashminas, actually, mm. still there. al the Street at that time was a furniture destination, yes. I think. It was yeah. a true busy street. It was so busy. Yeah, it was just a, a great social place to be and see. Absolutely, And you could, yeah. you could do what you do in a shopping center, except it was outdoors. Stop and have a cup of tea or a fresh juice. So that authenticity from trade, I would say they had trader mentality that time very much, yes. right? Going abroad, buying something, adding, adding your, your margins. Bag. Yeah. Yeah, selling have it. Have enough variety, have enough quality. Yes, yeah. knowing your audience very knowing well. Knowing your customer, no still idea. basics. Yes, yes. How did how has this evolved today? What is it today? Well, it's just about 100x of what it used to be because you've got shopping centers like Dubai Mall, for instance. Um, and I was involved as a, a, a executive VP at Emar at the time mm-hmm. for, for the leasing of 1,244 retail outlets in those days. So... And it's grown far beyond that now. Dubai Mall is, I don't know how many is, but I'm guessing around 1,600 different retailers now. So it's huge. But what's happened is in the old days, we would have a souk, but you would know everyone. Yeah. You'd know everyone. Yeah. You'd, you'd, your friends or, you know, whoever they were, and you'd buy regularly from them, whatever it was. But they were just relationship-building places. They were social places. Is it still? 
It must be, because if it's not in one way or another relevant socially to you as an individual, you're not likely to go back very often. What do you feel um, out of the, so we look at the GCC countries, right? So it's UAE, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Oman. Oman, Bahrain, Bahrain, Qatar, Bahrain. absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they all different in oh, terms of, of that evolution? Yes. Yeah? Yes, yeah, sure. I, I think that the best part about living and working in Dubai, residing here for the last uh, 20 odd years, has been that Dubai has been the leader. And yeah. they've really wanted to be the leader. They wanted to have more brands than any other place in the world, and they've succeeded. Uh, so sure, Oman has been slow in adopting it. Um, Bahrain is slow, but moving quicker for sure. Um, if you look at uh, Saudi now, I mean, it's just exploded in terms of the uh, overall amount of uh, retail that's being created and more retail being created by the year 2030. So it's a, it's a huge push. Huge push. Is it still, is it more, you've said, uh, I'm a little bit jumping, but just wanted to uh, touch upon this. Is it still that kind of, I buy something outside, bring it here and sell it in this new design environment, or it's more a mentality now, I'll create something else myself. Let's look at, I know, Nina, you're a good little shopper, I can tell, just looking at you. You like to shop. Okay. So <laughs> Online, that, though, to well, be honest. Maybe we'll talk about that, outside. too. We'll talk about that, too. <laughs> but I think you have maybe been to the level shoe district mm -hmm. in Dubai Mall. Mm -hmm. Okay. You liked it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I like it. I, I haven't met any woman yet who doesn't like this. I mean, what not the, to like there? <laughs> as many shoes as you could ever imagine Just in your most walk. dreams, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so what's different about that? It's the, let's talk about that for a second. What's made the level so successful mm -hmm. is that for that person, for the people who are involved in buying women's shoes, so all the women in the world, this is a place, if you want to see what the, the trending styles are or what's available, you go there. Yeah. And so it's like in the blue souk, uh, the, the guys that I used to go to, this is years ago now, years ago, but he had the best pashmina. And my wife at the time would say, we got to go back and see Ali. He's got the best pashminas. I got to go there and we got to check. Okay, it's the same thing. Fast forward level shoe district interesting and you've got a wide wide variety of shoes and you want to be there it's it's interesting i like this um, um the comparison the analogy yeah uh, analogy yes it's a very interesting analogy so so in terms of in terms of the global trends now global evolution we feel um we feel that dubai, we say that dubai is a you know one of the leaders in retail, right? One of the leading shopping destinations it now. It absolutely is, yes. You know, put some big Dubai <clears throat> Mall, Mall of the Emirates, some, some iconic malls on the global shopping map. But is it is it really the leading? Or they're still in other places like New York, they're still at the forefront. The reason I'm asking, because I work, let's say, with Maj Talfo team. I had an experience, amazing experience work. That time when... They were building malls. It was going around, looking for the benchmarks, right around, and bring the best here. Sure. Is this situation still now, or it's, or do you know what I mean? Or it's oh, no, now no, the I, other way around? I, no, no, I totally understand what you're Sorry saying. Sorry to go like this no, in no, this I spiral. Okay. <laughs> so, Nina, the whole idea about retail that you have to embrace early on, and for 42 years now, I've had to embrace it, and that retail is all about change. Mm -hmm. Nothing is static in retail, even for five minutes. So when you have the latest and greatest store, whatever it's selling, like the Level Shoe District, whatever it is, you have to embrace that because that's what is a leading sort of denominator. That's the leader in this marketplace for women's shoes. If you look at any other location, it's going to come in second, even when you go to New York, even when you go to Milan, even when you go to Paris. Uh, each one of these international locations are good for a few things. For example, if you're in Paris mm -hmm. 
and you're in Vendôme and you're looking at the, the front and the new facades that are going on, all of the luxury stores. But that's a different experience. It's a different experience. And if you go to uh, back into Dubai Mall and you see the luxury brands that are there or what's going on, it's a different experience. But it's relevant in this market. Let me explain why, in my view, a lot of the retail in Dubai has surpassed anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. And that is because Dubai wanted to become very attractive as a destination for a couple of things. One was shopping and variety and maybe good prices, but shopping and variety mainly. The second was the sun and the sand and the sea. So those are the reasons. And you tie those all into tourism. And tourism accounts to around 40% of the sales of the retailers. So it all kind of facilitates itself, if you follow what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today, is Dubai more, or the UAE, let's talk about the UAE, because I think uh, Abu Dhabi is uh, with Yas Mall and uh, Galleria Mall and so on, also putting you know, an impact or the, the mark on the map. Is it a highly competitive? Is there still space for the smaller retailers or for the newcomers? Tricky question. Yeah, no, and I'd, I'd say absolutely yes. But I think that the one thing that, uh, so I have 40 odd years of experience in the retail business. What is the main issue that is the, the roadblock to these smaller retailers from succeeding? What? And that is, is that no one that I've seen in the retail business has been an overnight success. It's taken years to gain notoriety. It's like anything even in your own career. No one is an overnight success. And if they are, that success quickly evaporates. But if you build on things, build on things, build on things year after year after year, then uh, you'll be successful. The challenge for the new retailers has always been a, a lack of capital to stay in the game because the bigger players have enough capital to keep going and they can dominate the market because of their their position and their financial capability. So in a nutshell, is there room for a lot more retailers? Absolutely. Does it happen overnight? Absolutely not. And what does it take? It takes deep, deep pockets financially. So very deep. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the location. So, because I see it there, I sort of intuitively understand that it requires a lot of financials. It does. Right? But then I see this um, newcomers that don't necessarily have that. And they're full of opportunity, you know, dreams and, you know, the dreams and opportunities that they think and people they meet that give them this kind of tell them about the opportunities and the footfall and the shopping centers you know there's 300,000 people a day in dubai mall think about that but i, I understand there's no real chance for the small retailers at this today right to I mean, even sure i mean unless you have yeah. deep 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 pockets deep. because the real estate there is incredibly expensive so is there a chance here still that you don't really have that deep pocket? <laughs> <laughs> Is well, there online? Is there well, no, online? No, I think, uh, you know, first of all, retail now is all about everywhere. It's not just in a shopping center. It's not just online. It's not just in your phone. It's not any of that. It's everywhere. And you and I both expect it to be everywhere. And if we want something, we're going to be able to get it, whether it's online or whether it's in a store. We're going to be able to get it. It's just like that. It's, it's all about convenience and, for some, I guess, price. But it's also being able to find something that is going to be make you feel good because it's supposed to make you feel better about acquiring something. It's the feeling you get when you buy. And it's not just the product. It's the ambiance in the shop or the ambiance in the wherever you're going to see. And then it's also about how you were treated by the shopkeeper or the staff. It's so, it's so many things. 
everything together, yeah. the right components. Or right. online, how fast it takes, or if it didn't, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't accept your credit card. You're not likely to want to go back and fight for that thing as much. Yeah. Do you so. feel, you've mentioned the, the word convenience. Yes. Or purchasing habits. How different are they from, let's say, Europe or America? Or, oh, they're the know. same. I'd say, are they the, yeah. you know, here's, what I, uh, here's what I have learned, um, because I do travel a lot, and through Europe, through North America, and through the, the GCC, Middle East, I would say that there, are, uh, there is a higher penetration of uh, phone uh, connectivity in this region. Mm-hmm than even as there is in, say, North America or in Europe. So therefore, I would say that people are probably more tuned in regionally about what opportunities are available Mm -hmm. to buy something Mm -hmm. than they are even in Europe or North America. So, I mean, statistically, um, and this is a global thing, um, it was the last I looked is a long time ago, about a year ago, though, it was 87% of people who purchased something, whatever it was, a pair of pants or shoes or whatever, they looked online first yeah. to get educated a little bit. And then they checked out with their friends whether or not they had bought the same thing and their experience with it. And that goes from shoes to watches to cars to whatever it is. Yeah. So social media. It's crucial. It's crucial. Yeah. Social media in Arabic or language sensitive. No, everywhere, no. everywhere. I think that um, what I would say is is that it depends on the region, it depends on the city, it depends on the demographic you're speaking of. If you're looking at an older age profile in the GCC, then likely it has to be Arabic. But if you're looking at a younger age profile in the region, then it's likely to be English because there's a wider variety of, of things available through English language than there would be in Arabic. So let's just, if we look at the UAE market, with the UAE, the best thing to have is deep pockets, <laughs> right? Now, it's very highly competitive, correct? But it's a lot of opportunities and it has a big world attention to this market. Now, a lot of new people coming. Sure. So it's, um, it's a lot of opportunities still. Now, if we move to Saudi Arabia. Okay. How does that feel there? Is it still like blue souk type of uh, shopping or we've already evolved? No, no, it's evolved. Okay. Um, It depends on the area and the town. Um, Mm -hmm. You see, the the big difference between Saudi and, say, the UAE, for instance, is is that when I last looked, I think the UAE had somewhere around 10 million-ish people. And Saudi has somewhere around 32 million. So it's 3x the size, right? It's three times the size of the market here. But there's a but. The but is is that it's spread over a far larger land area and many, many smaller communities. So when I travel through Saudi, and I have done fairly extensive travel from one end to the other through Saudi, a lot of the shopping centers were built in the uh, 2000 and seven or mm-hmm. 2004 to 2010 12 so they're not the latest generation of shopping center but they are still very relevant in those markets mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so in saudi what's happening now is is that in the next well i would say by 2030 or probably before mm-hmm. let's say 2028 it will be as compelling a venue for retail as dubai is today and I'm talking about the big city cities yeah. like Jeddah and like uh, Riyadh, for instance, and Dammam. Right. What is the situation there for the smaller retailers? Now, a little bit. I'm not talking the tiny, tiny mother show, you know, mm-hmm. grandmother show, but you know, a good brand somewhere in Europe, but quite niche, and would like to explore new opportunities. Sure. Okay. Well. I can say my my wife is Turkish, and mm-hmm. and she's she's a great little shopper, and she knows all of the Turkish brands, and there are some fabulous Turkish brands that want to expand their footprint yeah. out of Turkey into the GCC yeah. particularly. They like the GCC market. And what they've learned is, is that in their shops, for instance, in Istanbul or Izmir or some of the other cities that they're located in, they have a huge Arabic tourist following. 
Mm. So these Turkish brands are now becoming very, very popular and in Saudi. So uh, Bono has been able to create quite a great little market between uh, her friends who are retailers who have great brands and great quality and great manufacturing and bringing them into the Saudi marketplace. So it's worked well. So to give you an idea, though, mm -hmm. what kinds of products we're talking about, mm -hmm. many of the uh, clothiers in Turkey actually manufacture under license for Zara. Mm, yeah. So mm. they have a very high quality manufacturing capability. They are very quick to adopt great style. They know what works seasonality wise and, and it's very transportable. So those are the issues you look at when you're asking me if there's someone in, e in Europe who wants to come. Yeah, absolutely. But don't forget there's seasonality issues here that mm -hmm. are going to be important. There's the tourist component in this region that is important. And when you look in Riyadh, it's similar, but not quite the same level of number of tourists yet. Yeah, but the, and the the population, of course, like you said, is we're so yeah, we're yeah. talking about completely. Mm -hmm. And how's the situation there? Is there no, can I just as a retailer go on my own, open the store, open little shop, start selling, get a kiosk, and is it hard? Well, I, I think it's what your what is your definition of hard? Because I'd say nothing nothing in retail is easy. By the way, first of all, retail is probably one of the most difficult businesses to enter into, and it's difficult because you really have to know or learn quickly what makes it successful for you. And so, yes, uh, you can go to Saudi. You can set up your own company. You are able at this point to not even require a Saudi partner to be mm -hmm. with you. You can do it. Um, but I would say that in Saudi, from my experience, you do need deeper pockets, perhaps not as deep as what you'd need in the UAE, but you'd still need to you have... still need that. You'd, you'd still need to have <laughs> a sustaining financial capability, if, yeah. that, if that characterizes it. Right. What about... Other markets, Oman, you've mentioned, I've heard is sure. growing, right? Very great Ve market. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, my exp I have um, some experience in Oman. I love it. I, I love think Oman too. Culturally. Oh, and, I, and just the physical, right, beautiful, right. the sea, the Indian Ocean, the coastline, the surfing, the kite surfing. It's got everything. Everything. Well, what I've noticed in Oman, it has that. Uh, they still follow a lot of protocols in terms of the business meetings, right? Yes. And everything is at this kind of slower pace, it is. I would say, compared to what, you know, the speed we're fit yes. or fit, uh, witnessing today things here. In, things in this country are, are operating at a very high level and very quickly, yes. Yeah. Have you, have you noticed <clears throat> the speed actually? How is it, has you noticed the increase in the last couple of years or, or it's only me? It comes, no, no, absolutely, no. Nina. Yeah, it comes with the increase in the population dynamics yeah. here. And I'd say the other thing that's changed fundamentally in the, in the 20 years that I've been here is the um, age profile. Mm -hmm. So it's a younger person's uh, place uh, and the people who were um, getting into their late 40s, 50s, certainly the 60s, they're all gone from here. They're, I don't mm -hmm. know where they go, but I don't see them. For example, when I first came in, in 2004, there were probably 15 couples, Canadian couples, mm -hmm. who were similar. And and. I'm the last standing, <laughs> so I'm still here. That's because I'm just so young. But the rest of them, they're all moved on. You're full of energy. That's it. This country needs people like you. Yeah, well, Experience plus energy. <laughs> Oman, yeah. So it's a little bit slow. I felt it's a little. It, it has slower. its own speed. Yeah. It is slower, and I think that the the one challenge with slower is the fact that because it is slower. It takes longer to get a foothold. Mm -hmm. I've heard that in Oman, people living in Oman, they prefer buying luxury goods outside. The whole idea of tourism, and I think that uh, people in this country are well aware of it, in, in, in Dubai particularly, when you travel, and you know this when you go to Europe or wherever you go, 
you like to go shopping. You like to see what's on offer and you make some purchases. And I know back in, two, in 2006, seven, and we're negotiating with LV to come into mm-hmm. Dubai yeah. Mall. Uh-huh. And they didn't want to have a very big store because they said that most of their clients, this is back then, most of their clients would go to Paris or they would go uh, abroad and they would buy that product abroad and come back home with it. It's not just Oman. It's not, not just Oman. When I have been involved in the design of some retail stores, not only Dubai Mall, but many other locations, mm-hmm. the culture in the region, so not just here, but throughout the GCC, the culture is, is that It's best, and the stores that are the most successful have an area within that shop that the people who are walking by the front of that store cannot see you in the back of that store making the purchase. Mm. And that goes on to say something what you were speaking of just now about people in Oman may come to Dubai to do their luxury shopping. But on the other hand, the shop's in Dubai, for instance, many of the luxury stores have areas that are just exclusively hidden. Mm. Interesting. Makes right? you feel special. Makes you feel special. It's all about how you feel. And what's the story, right? Oh, it, the story is something that I think, from my experience uh, working with the retailers here, the homegrown brands, I think that whole experience, how it makes you feel and what it means. Yes. As a story. Yes. I think it has to be a story. Everybody wants a good story and they want to be involved in a good story. They want to be part of that good story. So really it's up to the retailer, whoever that is, of whatever product they're selling. It has to be a great story. Look at Emirates Airline. What a great story. I'm a big fan of them. I'm a huge fan of Emirates Airline and I fly on all kinds of airlines around the world. But it's like when you're coming home, you're coming home on Emirates. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. all you want to do. The minute you see them going to you, you know, you see the check in counter, you already feel home. Yeah, yeah, you, you feel just comfortable. Feel, oh, you feel comfortable. Wherever, you go, oh, yes, okay. And now you know no, what it's I'm like in the in the A three eighty or in the triple seven yeah. or whatever. You yeah. know, and you know what the experience is. And that's it. It's a great experience. You want to repeat that experience. Is it more expensive? Absolutely. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So Oman, great place. But expect a little bit of a, a slow, maybe not as fast growth or growth or progress as in Dubai, correct? Yeah, the progress is there. It's slower, for sure. Slower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kuwait. Uh, sorry, no, before that, Qatar, I think, okay. because it's still, it's also quite a, I don't want to, I want to try, I want to be politically correct. <laughs> Competition in the, with the, a little bit with the UAE, could we say that? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. How is the situation there for new retailers, for the smaller? Um, the, let me talk before I answer that, and yeah, I will sorry. explain it fully to get to your point. What has happened in the last, th- since COVID, since COVID? In mm-hmm. 2019, retail was not doing as well globally not just here globally it was it was a little bit of a downward slide since the days that shops opened again and the shopping centers opened again after the covid situation most shopping centers for example the average occupancy in turkey uh huh 98% 98% average so some are like uh, 100 with a waiting list, and others are 95-ish. It's the same here. There's just really not a lot of retail capacity in any country, certainly in this region that I've seen. And even if I'm listening to my friends who are in the retail industry in North America, it's also the, the, the uptick in the retail interest has gone dramatically, and I'm talking about the physical retail, it's dramatically risen. It's mind-blowing because what we, when you look online, think you think, oh, shopping malls are dead, we're going just to eat there, we buy everything online, right? Is that is that the, the impression I think 
We could. Well, I, I read a lot as well. Let me talk. Uh -huh. we, we didn't answer your first question. I'll get back yes, to it. Yes, yes, yes. But, but let me go back to, I read a lot. And in the Financial Times, uh, I was at an airport and I was reading this a physical newspaper. I mean, go figure. It was a newspaper. I was reading it. And it was talking about in, in the UK. So this is UK specific article. Mm -hmm. And it was written by an editor uh, or a writer for the Financial Post. Anyway, Financial Times. What it stated was is that four of the major uh, online companies in yeah. the UK are very close to bankruptcy. And if you look at what's going on in the online world, the, the bloom is off the rose, if you follow mm. the analogy. And that is, is that it was really hot during the time when it was COVID because you couldn't get out. There was no social interaction. You could still shop and you could get everything delivered and it was fine. Now for apparel, particularly and other goods like that, these companies that made port a uh, you just name it, yeah. Farfetch, uh, uh, Boho, all of these, they're, they're, they're a fraction uh, and they're bouncing off almost bankruptcy. So when you say online is taking over, I disagree. I think that when I mentioned that in Turkey that it's 98% uh, occupancy level and here it's at least that, could be closer. UAE is probably not a great example, but it's true. And if you look at some of the other shopping centers, uh, like in Saudi, I look at the shopping centers there, they're all mostly all leased. So there's been a big change. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about retail, it's always all about change. And right now, the online sellers are really suffering. And the uh, real physical retail is flying. And so you ask me then, why is this not working? It's not working for online because, and here's some statistics mm -hmm. to think about. Of all goods bought online, between 40% and 60% are returned. Yeah. yeah. And when you get that garment, let's just think about a, a jacket that you got, came, you didn't want it, it goes back. So you're paying for all of the packaging. You're paying for the person to deliver it. First of all, the logistics to deliver it, then the delivery, then the last mile delivery. Then you got to pick it up again after a few days later. And then it comes back to your warehouse, to your supply center. You cannot sell that as a new garment anymore. You can't just repackage it and send it to somebody else who wants the same size, same color garment. You can't because it's gone out and it's been used. You've got all of that wrapping, all of the goods that have gone. You've got yeah. the, the fuel that was responsible for that. You've got all of that. But then you also have the, the credit card facility and the sophistication in, the, in, in what happens with how do you get the money back to that person and how soon do you get it back and how does that affect your bottom line. So there's a lot of different details that have to be worked out still in the online world but we still want it. And for example, if you want to buy groceries online, fine, it's still flying, it's a great business, but the margins are 3%, not 50%. So you really got to watch what you're doing. And your, your fulfillment centers have to be pretty close to your catchment area where you're going to be shipping it, because otherwise your cost of delivery is really going to eat up that 3% of margin in about a minute. I, I meet entrepreneurs who want to, who think that they can conquer this market through online. But that would be one channel, but they won't conquer yeah. everything online. Unless it's something, maybe cosmetics, maybe something like that, but I'm thinking of physical Yeah, products. I'm with you. Intuitive. I think now you've mentioned COVID. The first thing, there are two places I wanted to visit after the COVID lockdown. What's the first one was the beach and the second one was the mall. <laughs> 
There you go. <laughs> that's it. That's all. I, because you know. we're all social yeah. beings. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. need to have this social interaction. And where do we get it? I mean, we we can get it when we go to a shopping center or wherever you go. Like you go to Mall of Emirates, you go to any of the shopping and, centers yeah. here, and yeah. you can see people, and you can have a coffee, or you can sit down, or you can buy something. Yeah. Now going to my question before okay. Qatar, just Qatar. okay, just. Uh, yeah. Okay, How me, is the situation there? Well, it's it's amazing. First of all, it's uh -huh. amazing. And the shopping centers there are really world class. And if you look at the new ones like Vendôme, for instance, mm -hmm. they are absolutely stunningly beautiful. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, is that their um, tourism headcount isn't near what it should be to support and sustain what that is. And if you look at the actual population of... Um, Qatar, let's say it's three million ish mm -hmm. around there, and I believe it's less than three hundred thousand people who have a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Like the GDP is over ninety-eight thousand dollars per year per person. It's it's mm -hmm. big numbers, but it's a pretty small market to have ten super regional shopping centers. Is that how many they have? It's, yeah, it depends on how you want to measure super regional. But yeah, there's a lot of shopping centers and not a lot of people. And I not a lot like of tourists yet either. That's the, that's the challenge. So they have more than us here? Perhaps. Perhaps. It goes by, you know, how many people well, per square foot sort wow. of thing. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. So what is, how, let's say, three Success factors, or success, but or three important things you need to pay attention to if you're a newcomer to this space. Sure. Across the region, let's let's just summer, let's just you know okay. categorize it yeah. across the region. Okay. So first of all, um, you you really must have great patience. You must be patient. I'm sorry. That's Thank the you. top. If you're Thank not you. And, and not everybody <laughs> is patient. Not yeah. everyone is. I understand yeah. that. Okay, so you have to be, be patient. The second thing is, is that unlike, I would say, North America, which I spent mm -hmm. the bulk many years, let's call it 35, 40 years of my life, 50 years actually, mm -hmm. doing business. In North America, for instance, relationships are important, but they are below the importance of actually doing the business. It has to be a financial, it has to work, and this is how we're going to do it, and then and then it gets to be a relationship, and then it gets to be the outcome, and then, okay. This region is different, fundamentally different, and that is, and I give this for advice for all of your people on the podcast in this region, there's no shortcut to building a relationship. And I've always operated from the start. That's who I am. I'm a relationship kind of guy. This region, you must have a hugely solid, reliable reputation before anything starts. Your relationship has to be the number one thing. And the one thing about relationships, which I'm sure you know, you know you'll know this for sure, they don't happen overnight. They can no. take years. Yeah. And they can also be destroyed in five minutes. That's the other thing. So you need a great, solid relationship. You need to build that reputation. And you have to be consistent over time. So there's no dropping into Dubai, staying in a nice hotel, and trying to get some business done. It's not likely to really work out that well. That's what I've found. I People can argue, but that's what I've found. I tell some of my, you know, friends who are looking at this region that I have certain people that I've spent ten years having coffee with. Exactly. Ten years without even asking for any kind of business. No, you don't. And then, and then it comes, and then it just magically appears that these people advise, you know, all my business, ninety-nine percent, all referrals. That's magic. Where it comes. It Magic, comes. yes. Yeah. Well, you are an overnight success. Just look. It just took you 25 years to make that overnight success, right? Yeah. Maybe if I had the business, maybe I had, if I had a good website. 
<laughs> would have taken well, the website all in 19 years. <laughs> well, maybe. But a website 20 years, only, yeah, 20 uh, years it took me. Yeah, a website is only part of it. It's, yeah. it's, you yeah. know, it's way more Absolutely. than that. Absolutely. And then, but what I must say about this region is, once you have great relationship here, you have relationship worldwide. You do. Right? Because the way we have work in Canada, because of the people here or yes. Saudi Arabia, right? Yes. yes. All the way to Malaysia, Indonesia is all because we had a great time, great relationships here with people. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. I'm so much enjoying it. I want to go back to market. I think markets, it's worth, you know, one hour per each, each market to discuss it. Maybe it will have in the future another episode also. I want to talk about Middle East shopping, cons uh, Middle East uh, shopping. Council of uh, shopping yeah, I'm and sorry retailers. about no, it. I'll okay. cut it. No, 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 don't. That's fine. <laughs> but it's always hard. You have to agree I know, with me. I got me. it. I got it. I got it. When Let's I write it down, and I know you guys for maybe 10 I know, years I give you at a least. I'm a huge supporter of our organization. Very I love much. It. Yeah. Uh, and every time no. I write it, I always have to me the M E S C S. <laughs> Don't edit this part. Don't, yes. because it's so important. The Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers. Yes. I just slow down in my whole mind thing when I say it out. Even you? Of course. Because I do that all the time, yeah, and then yeah, I every just have time I slow I'm, down, right? Uh, every time I'm worried about it, I made it. I, uh, you know, like, what is the plan now? Thirty years. Thirty years this year. It's incredible. Is there anyone here? I've been here 27 years. I feel a dinosaur. <laughs> but uh, uh, 30 years is a success on its own to exist. What is the plan for the next 30 years? Well, Nina, I'm going to come back here and ask you. <laughs> because from our perspective, it's going to be doing more of the same. But more of the same means embracing change and really trying to bring people together about what that change might mean. So if you're a member, for example, and you want to find out what's going on in, in Riyadh, for instance, in a shopping center development in Riyadh, I mean, I'm happy to sit down. And we have many members in Riyadh who would be more than happy to sit down and go through everything with you about it. So as long as there's movement in the market, up, down, good, bad, whatever it is, there'll be a need for what we do. And I'm most excited about it because for me, um, it, it kind of continues to go from strength to strength. And why do I say that? Because people find that they can actually benefit from some of the knowledge, not all, but some of the knowledge they can learn by talking to different people. For example, you've been a great supporter of the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers. You have been Thank huge. You. And there are so many people like yourself who if I were to phone up and say, Nina, you know, this guy or this woman would like to really find out a little bit more about this aspect and they're tired of listening to me. Maybe you want to chat with them. And that's what happens. So I just try and bring people together. The other thing is I, I want to keep continuing to knock down the walls that are between people because we all have a similar story, similar challenges, similar headaches about how to make the best out of the business that we're working in, how to bring the best retailers in, how to make them successful, how to make a shopping center work better. These are all things that I think they're part of it. And, and if people want to learn about this, now it's a niche industry, don't get me wrong, not everybody's interested about shopping centers. But if you do have an interest that way and in retail, that's the next 30 years. And from my experience with you guys, and not because you're my guest, what I love about your organization is I feel so comfortable there because I'm an instructor in your school, which I highly recommend everyone as a newcomer, especially to attend which is, um, and we'll leave all the details in the comments also. Sure. But I feel so comfortable there. Everyone is so welcoming and happy to help. It's unbelievable, right? It's not a typical business event no. where you just run around, give your number. Yeah. It's a truly... Yeah. The, I think it starts with the whole notion that... I'm really trying to help people because mm -hmm. I've been in a position where I didn't have the answers that people had asked me, but I knew the answers were out there. 
but I didn't even know where to find those answers. And I wanted to try and be a place that would be comfortable for people to share that information so that they could carry on. So what we do say in the organization is we're here to help you to facilitate your business. And mm -hmm. that's part of what we like to do. Help people to facilitate, to figure out what they need to do to make it successful. So that's one thing. And the other thing is we really want people to um, raise their profile mm -hmm. locally, regionally, globally. And, mm -hmm. and every time when, I, when we hire new people in the office and I say this to them and some of them roll their eyes. Oh, really? Globally? Are you kidding me? Really? And I say, well, yes, absolutely. And then I give them all kinds of examples about, well, for instance, our buddy, our, my, the director for years. I've worked with Leah for 15 years. Yeah, I wanted to say yeah. that your and, team. And yeah, and Leah, she left. You she didn't left? Know. She left. But guess where she went? Where? Leah left because... Her husband has a green card and her two sons are in university in Florida. And she oh. decided she'd rather be with her family. Can you imagine that? Because she you have the most, <laughs> one of the most loyal team, I oh, think, in, team in this fantastic. part of, right? Our, our team is fantastic. Yeah. But like Leah, for instance, she was 15 years we worked together. I was never happier to hear that she's now in Winter Park in Florida and she's doing a great job. Well, guess what she's involved doing now? What does she know? She's involved in the eventing business in Florida. How Very did she nice. do that? Well, gosh, I knew three guys who run big event businesses in Florida. She, I said, phone them up, give me your CV, and there's you. And she's done that. So I help people locally, regionally, and globally, and I help them to raise their profile. And so Leah has 15 years of running events. Do you think that they need people like that? Yeah, they love them. It's incredible. It's incredible. And I think this is really the success. This is where... This is where the secret sauce is. Have a open heart, you know, big heart, and have a good intentions. Yeah, that, yes. And here, this place, it makes a difference when you when you have those intentions. I just answered you in Turkish. I just realized that of that. Yes, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right. Uh, unfortunately, we have to finish this um, okay. this podcast, but I hope we're going to continue and our collaboration with Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers will continue. Oh, look at you. You did it. I knew I <laughs> always get it. I can write it down. It's just when I get worried about pronouncing. Never worry about that. Uh, but I want to ask you now as a businessman, as a leader, yes. three things um, that I ask all my guests at the end of the podcast. Sure. To be a successful businessman that a lot of people want today and to be a successful leader. What do you need to do regularly? The, other, the second question is what you should stay away from. Mm -hmm. And the third question is what not to be afraid of. So okay. do regular, to be successful. To be successful, I think that uh, we've spoken about this earlier in the podcast. And the first thing I would say is never, ever um, try and shortcut. There's no shortcuts yeah. to success. And as you were saying, it took you 20 years to become an overnight success. And it's taken me, you know, 42 years to be an overnight success in the retail business. So what am I saying? I'm saying that don't stop, persevere, carry on, have your vision of what it is you want to do, and then build relationships with those people, just five. Build your relationships with just five people who you think could make a difference for you and you make that every year, you make that difference. You talk to those five people, you get a relationship going. And then every year, five more, and then five more. But these are relationships that are going to really create a future for you mm -hmm. in whatever industry you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So Very that was the first question. Yeah. Second was? To stay away from. Oh, to stay away from. There's no shortcuts, first of all. And then uh, there are people who have bad reputations. And I think that they are quite self-evident in the industry mm -hmm. or in the market. And you just have to stay away from them because you are known by the five people who are your closest friends, closest business associates. So much of, uh, what a great advice. What a great, honestly, 
It's true. I, and what I'm thinking now is, who are those five people? Whom do I have? How am I giving? <laughs> well, <laughs> who are there? You have them. <laughs> and then do, is that space. person the you right one? <laughs> okay, and the last thing yeah, you Yeah, the asked last about, one. Don't be afraid of. Okay, so um, in my home office in, in Istanbul, I have a sign that I actually painted myself oh, years ago, years ago. And the sign is just two words painted in big letters, hand painted. And on this sign, on this painting, it's no fear. No fear. No fear. That says it all. No fear. Thank you so much, David. Thanks a lot. I really, really enjoyed it. I hope it's the beginning of a beautiful collaboration Please make in it the so. area of podcasts also. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Nina, thank you. It's been an ultimate joy for me. Thank you. I enjoyed every sec oh. every minute of it, okay. like your life in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> can I have it a little bit for a little bit? Because so, mm -hmm. I cannot see my cheat sheet.